Krebs are here. Welcome, guys. Welcome, Bob. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, happy holidays. Yep. And this is really a happy holiday. I was just we were talking right before we came back here. I have not listened to this album yet. I saved this as a as a present. And, Great. And I know you were saying the one thing you got for Christmas was having Walking on the Water come out. We ought to tell everybody we are talking about a brand new Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers album called Walking on the Water. Yeah, it's been a long time coming too, Bob. Yeah. We really uh we really uh waited a while to do this and we really put in a lot of hard work into it. Uh, for the past three years, yeah. and uh, I'm really proud of it and happy of it. Congratulations, both Th of you. Yeah, Thanks, thank Bob. You, you know, walking on, walking on the water, of course, is one of the the, the more popular tunes you've been doing for. A I while. got a tape of the first Young Rumblers gig. I yeah. still have the tape of it, uh, and uh, it was at the University of Delaware in <laughs> Newark. And uh, when was that? Uh, it was called the Skid Row Beach Party, February 24th, 1984. And uh, uh, it was at the Skid Row Beach Party. There was a whole lot of people there. And we were this, not the first band. We weren't even the first band. We had someone opening for us on our first gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was, uh, what was that band called with Rogers singing? It was um, Anais Nin, I Roger. think. Catherine the Great. I think it was Catherine the Great <laughs> opened up for us. Anyway, then it was us. Then the Maytags went on. Then Rocket 88 was the big headliner. And, uh, and so anyway, that was our first gig. And Walking on the Water is on the tape on the first gig we ever did. So this is one of the that's one of the real early songs that I wrote for the members. Yeah. This is uh, like you said, it has been a long time coming. You've released a bunch of other tapes that we've been broadcasting for about a year. But I, I was this something that you had really was this something you've really wanted to do for a long time, was put the, put out your own album independently? Something. Yeah. Yeah, it's been like Tommy was saying, it's been Two years, and we've been talking about it the whole time, and we finally got around to it. We're going to bring in 1987 with a brand new record. Yeah. And you man. are. People have been asking us for a long time. Yeah. You know, for, I mean, really, literally for, for the past two years, people have been saying, When's, when are you going to make a record? Because, you know, because a lot, of, a lot of bands put out records, you know, and they say, well, well these guys put out records. When are you going to put out a record? And we say, well, those guys' records are great, but we want ours to be really great you know what i mean and and we just wanted to make sure that it was the best possible way we could do it well the last time you came down on the show we we did we played everything that you'd recorded up to to then you just dropped in on us and uh i remember you saying then that um you've been learning it's been a straight learning progress a uh, process for the last well two years the band's two years old and you you were saying you have not stopped learning from one set, so you figure at this point you've really you've gotten enough under your belt that you felt exactly, confident with it. Exactly. I mean, it's just it's we're never gonna stop getting better. So really, there's no hurry to make a record or to to do a thing like this. You know, there's no. It's just when you feel that the time is right. We feel like now is the time that we can make a record that is still gonna sound like a local record. It's gonna be a rock and roll band, a you know a homeboy band. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, and and it's going to be, and and now's the time we can do it great. Now's the time when we're a really good homeboy band. You know what right. I mean? And we're not a national act yet, and soon we will be. So know? did you look at this this way? I mean, uh, you someday we will be. <laughs> yeah, never put <laughs> it in the too soon. <laughs> <laughs> but did you look at it that way? As a was this album? Is you're looking at this album more as a step or or as you say? This is a a, a good homeboy band. Sh sure, it's a step. And it's a great homeboy band. I mean, you check out the record. I mean, I'm very pleased with it, is all I'm saying. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I'm just saying I'm very proud of it, and, and, I'm, and I think I'm 95% happy with it, you know? And, uh, and right, but this is a step. This is not a national record. This record is not, is not on CBS Records being distributed around the world. Right. You know, this record is on Antenna Records being distributed in Delaware, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and... and Jersey a little bit, you know what I mean, or whatever. I, I remember another album on Antenna that was done just that. Exactly. It was called Amore. <laughs> and they sold 100,000 copies, and, and, and it was a great record, you know, and who cares how many copies they sold. The main thing is it's a great record. Let's talk about making it a little bit. You had Andy King producing with you from the Hooters, of course. Yeah, how was, Andy how was, was that? He was great. He's, he's been a, a real good influence to us, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. 
He's another Delaware boy. I mean, yeah. all of us are yeah. Delaware here. I we mean, all he's met, we right. all met in Newark, Paul, Andy, yeah. and I. Right. You know, down at the U of D. Did Andy? I mean, Andy is uh, a good producer. You say I hear he's really good in the studio with Andy's other bands. Andy's great for us because uh, because generally, first of all, Andy's a good person. You know what I mean? And uh, that's that's the number one prerequisite in anything. You know, in yeah. anything that w that we work with. Um, but Andy lets. He let it be the Young Rumblers record. You know what I mean? It's, he didn't make it the Andy King band. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Andy King and the Young Rumblers. Some band. producers can get in the way like that. Uh, so I've heard. You yeah. know, luckily, I've been real, we've been really lucky that we have never had to deal with that because I guess Andy's the only producer we ever had. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds like you had a lot of fun making this record. We had a ball, man. It was a lot of hard work, too. A lot of hard work. I mean, let's put it this way. When you're in the studio six days a week or whatever, maybe it was six days some weeks, some weeks it was only three or four days, some day, some weeks it was seven days. But nonetheless, when you're in the studio for 12 hours a day, you're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> you're going to have some di some bummer times. You're going to have some in-between times. A lot you of just, flounder hoagies. A lot of flounder hoagies, a lot of meatball sandwiches, a lot of pizza, right. a lot of sodas, a lot of candy, a lot of yeah. <laughs> salads once in a while, a lot of food, a lot of coffee, a lot of... Uh, you know, running jokes that just get, you know, really crazy. Um, Sometimes somebody should chronicle oh, the making great. of an album. Yeah. Particularly oh, a local. Well, that's what an album is. There it is. You got it in your head. Right. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I mean, if we hadn't eaten Flounder Hoagies, something would have sounded different. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? I'm serious, man. It's like, man, when yeah. we were doing that record 12 hours a day, you just run you just run into everything you know right. and, and you got and you end up really you know really working out a lot of things and we worked out a lot of things you know well, with the band members just with our relationships you know you find it exactly well, i want to get into that after i've heard a little bit i'm just i'm really anxious i wanted to to talk to you a little bit before we played it but like i said i had this in my hands over the uh, christmas holidays and i have not played it because i wanted to hear it for the first time with you guys tonight when you're here and oh, for thanks, our, for our fans tonight on uh, on Five Times tonight, we're going to play the whole thing. But uh, let's play side one. We'll come back and talk a little bit about uh, the making of the album and some some of the new people that are with the Young right. Rumbers. We won't say anything about that just now. Let's play side one of Walking on the Water by Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumbers. You're going to be hearing four tunes on this side. First one up is called Here I Come. Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers. And the Young Rumblers, I'm Home. That was side one of their brand new LP called Walking on the Water. And with us are Tommy Conwell and Paul Slivka from the group. And it sounds great. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. It really sounds great. I was mentioning, too, it sounds so lean and clean. Like, um, did you really work hard, you and Andy King, who produced it, work hard to... to really make it as, as streamlined as it sounds because well, it's really I mean it's really basic the yeah. basic band well you know there's something nice about um, about um, about simplicity you know and like they say ignor ignorance is bliss really <laughs> and, and, and in a way uh, we you know we I certainly keep things pretty simple I always have yeah. um, Andy and Phil Phil's the, Phil Nicola is the engineer from Studio Four, they felt like we should keep things simple, also. But that's so their sound, it's like basically, you said. Basically, it's yeah. I mean, it's a rock and roll record, and and you know, there's not a whole lot of of extra parts. I mean, it's a lot of times what you're hearing is is five guys. Uh, sometimes it's more. You know what I mean? But I mean, yeah. sometimes a lot of the records that you hear on the radio that they play at SDW have. 50 instruments going on you know what i'm saying a lot of times with us with that, that album it's, it's just five guys and and uh it makes it say it makes it it's rock and roll you know i mean i think it is well, pretty I tight and I wasn't, streamlined i wasn't putting it down at all right, i'm just saying it's, it's sometimes more difficult to make a very clean record than it is to layer you have 48 tracks sometimes it's so much more difficult to make a clean lean record than it is that's what i'm saying right i mean believe me i'm with you i think you know uh, man, when you can when you can like see the band in your head when you listen to a record, I love it. Mm -hmm. You know. Did you have any trouble identifying your sound? Now this is your first full scale recording. Uh, a lot of times, I know the first time I ever went and, and recorded myself. It's different to be in a studio and listen to your sound. Did you have any 
any apprehensions or any trouble when you were getting in there to say, oh, what, what do we sound like? What should it sound like coming back? Can I handle that one, Slivy? <laughs> well, once you start working on the songs, you start from the, the bottom up. You start with the drums, and then you start putting the bass on. And then while you're doing that, you start thinking about what you're going to do next. And then you start layering other pieces onto it. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you'll finally, you know, you'll come up with a, a product that's a characteristic of, of all the, the other components put together. Right. Well, it does sound like you guys live. I mean, that's to yeah. your credit and to Andy I'll King's you, credit. One of the things about that is I think, uh, you know, I think we kind of know what, we're do what we are. You know, I mean, I'd done it the same way every night for the past three years. You know, <laughs> I, I wasn't about to do it any different when I went in the studio. You know what I mean? Right. So, uh, you know, it, it came out sounding like the Rumblers. And I, and you know what I think? Uh, what I feel good about is we added two guys to the band, and I still think it, it sounds still like, sound the like the Rumblers. Yeah, it does. Because we were wondering about that whether it was going to change our sound. We were hoping that it wouldn't change our sound that much. Well, let's let's take a quick break here, do some business, and we'll come back and talk about just that. Uh, Tommy Conwell is here with uh, me. I'm Bob Bowersox, and Paul Slivka is here, too, from the Young Rumblers. We're talking about, well, just what we left talking about. We were talking about some new members in the band. Now, you have been a trio for a couple of years now with Jim Hannum on drums, but you just recently added some folks, Tommy. Why don't you tell us about we that? We added two guys, a keyboard player named Rob Miller and a guitar player named Chris Day. Uh, Robbie's from early Hooters Rob days. Rob played with the Hoots, and Rob played with Robert Hazard, and Rob's... Yep played bass with those bands. He's playing keyboards with us. He's, uh, he's obviously a real talented guy. He also plays some guitar with us. Um, Rob is a really, really good keyboard player who's going to be a really, really great keyboard player. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited. I mean, this is the first band Rob's played keys in. So, you know, he's, uh, he's, and he's, and he's great. You know, so and he's really going to be. And Chris Day, where'd Chris Day come from? Well, Chris Day came from the John Alexander Band. Oh, yeah. They've been doing real good up in Philly. Mm -hmm. And they played a d different kind of circuit than we did. You know, they, we, we didn't see them too much. They played some of the same clubs, but uh, right. he's what, a real good player. He's, what made a, you just, he's a real gem. Yeah. What made you to decide to... Uh, to add the new guys? Yeah. Well, you know, I think um, it's something... I always, I, I had an, um, a sound in my head for the Rumblers that I imagined, you know, that I, that I, um, that I heard, I've been hearing for like a year. Uh -huh. you know? I, I wanted to add people for a long time. And really, when I first started the Rumblers, I thought, great, this is what I can do best, you know, this is what we can do best. This is what I know how to do. I know how to play guitar. I know I can sing a little bit. Just give me a bass player and drummer. And we'll do my and we'll do my thing, and it'll happen, okay. And then that was fine for a while. Then uh, after a while, you start, you know, we started. I got Paul and Jim, and we said, okay, now we're becoming a real band. You know, we got some real musicianship. We're really getting together and everything. And we became a tight unit. And I felt like uh, I felt like, gee. I'm hearing other things in my head, like on "Still Believe in Me." It would just, I would just love to have keyboards on that song, mm -hmm. and on "I'm Not Your Man," I love to have keyboards. And I started just feeling like uh, it would be better with keyboards and stuff. Whereas in the beginning, I felt like it would be better as a three-piece. So what I'm saying is, the goal has always been to make the best music that that we know how to make. Right. And at that time, that was the best, and now this is the best. Well, like we were saying at the top of the program. It's always a progression. You're always yeah. continuing to learn and, and to, to experiment, which... It, it is, and you know, I feel like a little little kid again, you know? I mean, I feel like, I mean, this is our, you know, this Wednesday at the Stone Balloon is going to be, this is like our third week or second week of playing with the new yep. band. It's, it's all it's coming together. Band. And yeah. it is, and it's coming together, and, and you know, everybody's working really hard, and, uh, and I'm taking singing lessons up in New York, and they're helping me a lot, and... And I feel like I'm just learning how to sing now. You're keeping it interesting. That's what the whole thing is. I mean, oh, man. to keep it alive and interesting, you got to keep it going. But it was Woody Allen said, like, it's like a shark. If it doesn't move forward, it dies. Yeah. 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 Rock and roll is the same way. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I, I, we, we really love the new band. It's a lot of fun for us. It really is. Let's listen some more of it then. Great. This will be side two of Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumbler's brand new album. Out on Antenna Records, available everywhere, right, Tommy? Everywhere. It starts. It comes out tomorrow, Monday. It comes out the 29th. That's right. And you're having a little get-together for press and friends, and then it hits the streets on Tuesday.
mm -hmm. the 30th. Yep. So, so look for it. Beautiful cover designed by Barbara Blair from the Cornerstone Management people. Yeah, it looks pretty snappy, doesn't it? It does. That's out in the desert. That's in the <laughs> Sahara right there. I was there, saying to, uh, to Paul <laughs> earlier, it looks like you're on the moon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. That, that, should, that should tease you enough now to go out and figure out what we're talking about. <laughs> While you're th wondering about it, let's play side two. Here's one that we've played a number of times uh, on Fine Times Tonight before. It was recorded, I guess, as a warm-up for the album. This is I'm Not Your Man. Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers, their brand-new album, Walking on the Water. 